Abhyasa and Dispassion Practice and Practice and Dispassion Dispassion Understand this uh, words, two words coming from Patanjali. It says, who succeeds in meditation? Abhyasa literally translated into English as practice. And Vairagya. Another translation of Vairagya is uh, renunciation. But I would translate instead of renunciation as dispassion. That is the true meaning. Now, my friends, we all are aware of practice, isn't it? We all know what the practice is. Close your eyes, focus on the breath, chant some mantra, sit quietly. We all know all these steps, either from the Google or we have done some practice, so-called attended some session of meditation with the teacher. Uh, we say, you know, guided meditation. But what Patanjali says and do we really want to follow Patanjali, what it says? Oh, we say he's a great master, he's a great teacher. Buddha is a great teacher. So there we have to remove wrong notion about these two words, abhyasa, practice, which is translated uh, into English as practice, viragya, translated into English as dispassion. So when I said wrong notion about these two words, why I say so? Because what Patanjali says, we don't follow. But how to know what Patanjali says? If you want to study, you should study the commentary of the Yoga Sutra by a great master who discovered almost all the principles and his name is Vyasa. Vyasa commentary on every sutra means compressed files all these sutras are zip files and they are unzipped by the Vyasa. Who else can know Patanjali better than Vyasa? Now what he says. I'm summarizing. It's a long topic. The mind lives in five subjective states. What are, what are they wandering? Forgetfulness and obsessed. You know, when even while listening to me, you miss some words, phrase, and then the mind returns. See the forgetfulness, see the wandering nature of the mind. Just become aware. So the three wandering or I normally say crazy, lazy, and obsessed state of the mind. Meditation will never happen in these three states of the mind. What are the other two? Uh, fourth one is one-pointedness, but that represents that I am a seeker. What is this one-pointedness? The mind has a tendency 
to move within and look within. Let me make it more simple. Are you calm at present? Do you feel the sense of calmness? Are you aware and attentive? Aware, attentive, calmness. This is one state. So one-pointedness, according to Patanjali, means the mind is holding on to this state. And now there are five objective states of the mind. We say thoughts, contents. Well, mind made me crazy. Lot of thoughts, feeling, coming from the past, impressions, coming from the current day-to-day -day living, coming from the memory. So we have five uh, factual knowledge through the sense organ in the mind. So when the factual knowledge is distorted, it becomes a wrong knowledge. Second category of the thoughts. Third category is imagination. So I laughed at it. You know, the masters gave very funny examples. What is imagination? Fancies. Oh, the elephant is flying. I see that. I create that imagination. And the fourth one is the sleep, it means we have, and the fifth one is the memory. Now what is my definition of mindfulness or meditation? Emptiness of the mind. It means five objective states of the mind is absent in meditation. How? The mind is holding on to the state of steadiness. Tatra sthito yatano abhyasah. Literal translation is the mind is holding on to the state of steadiness, not of the body, of the mind, which is the fourth state, while while not attached to the first three states of the mind, that is, crazy, lazy, and obsessed. You are always in the state of meditation. This is what Patanjali means. He explains all about, oh, there are a lot of thoughts and wandering minds. So what to do? He says, abhyas veragya abhyam tan nirodha. Regular practice with wisdom. But this translation does not convey the right meaning. And when it does not convey the right meaning, then we continue to hold on the wrong notion, wrong thinking. That is why we have to study the Eastern wisdom. Otherwise, there is no need to study uh, because it's a part of the tradition. Otherwise we cannot understand. How can you understand electron, proton and neutron without understanding an atom? How can you understand an atom without understanding the matter? How simple it is. So now, simple thing I'm saying to you all, my friends. First become aware of even the 5% state of calmness while listening to me. Become aware, know it, experience it, and hold on this state during the entire practice. This will be the first and the last session. Close your eyes and then we will talk about it. Eyes are closed. So when you close your eyes, are you able, if I say, are you able to maintain that state? Wonderful. 
you know that is what I used to say the position of the body let everything changes outside uh, position of the body you are adjusting and, uh, and not aligning but at the same time you are aware of that state in the mind that is the fourth state you are doing the real practice of mindfulness you see teacher is simply a pointer teacher is simply a GPS nothing more than that so position of the body outside and the state of calmness which is a natural state of the mind that is why these masters talk a lot they explain you hundreds of principles at least to understand remove the wrong notion anyhow look at the breath with holding on to the state of calmness behind so what happens where the mind starts running to the wandering to the forgetfulness to the memory and uh, to the imagination now oh, that is what we say the mind is carried away by the impressions that rise during the practice and that is why the initial preparation is required. So now looking at the body, position of the body, looking at the breath, the status quo behind, not outside. Outside it is not required. Let it happen whatever happens and that brings us to the state of being comfortable. Where is being comfortable? It supports our what we are holding on to. See that. I translate the practice based on the talk that I give every time. Why? Being comfortable. So I explain it with You look at the neck joint, feel the sensation and experience the steadiness. Now see what did I say? I have been saying the same thing again and again. I did not say become steady. I say experience the steadiness, being comfortable and <clears throat> with the support of sensation. So I'm using the same word which Patanjali uses, Tatra Sthito. Sthito means steady. I'm not teaching anything new. Look at the shoulder joints. Feel the sensation being comfortable and steadiness. Move the mind on the hip joint. So why I'm moving slowly? So that the mind continues to hold on to that state of calmness when you were listening to me. <clears throat> Nothing else. Or you simply hold on to an experience of steadiness. The dispassion will happen by itself, the entire body entire body. I would say, do you see that how simple the meditation journey is? If we, the mind in, is clear, the intellect is a clarity and a conviction. We have a doubt-free mind.
Can you have a wandering mind when you have a doubt-free mind? See that. So these principles are interrelated. <clears throat> The entire body feeling sensation being comfortable and steadiness. Now being carefree is also same. Being carefree is also same. What that means? It simply means it simply means whatever the thoughts are coming and going, feeling, sensation, let it come and go. Why? I'm holding on. Naturally. Holding on to what? What is the natural state of the mind? Mind is 90% peaceful of the nature of calmness of the nature of right knowledge. Now, now you have the principle. You know it. There is a clarity. Now you do the practice. <clears throat> so thoughts are coming. The mind is not hesitated. Why? I know the natural state is there, so let me go there. You know, otherwise, you know, it is very complex process of transcending the mind to achieve the state of mindfulness. It is made very simple, easy, play and a fun by the teaching, by these teachings. So, we'll follow very simple. Inside, you are holding on to the state of calmness. Why you are not able to hold on? <clears throat> because of the first three states. How simple it is. Oh, it is because of this. What should I do? Do nothing. Look inside. That's what I have been saying. That's what I have been saying. So let us follow one more step and then we will keep the mind on the breath in variety of ways. Look at the head and the neck. Look at the head and the neck. And experience sensation, relaxation, and stillness. You see that? We are moving still there. I'm asking your mind to settle in that state. Right arm, mind, moving to... The right arm, you are there. In a couple of previous sessions, I stressed on the point that go slowly. And now I'm going directly. Experience the state. Left arm, feel the sensation and 
relaxation and stillness. Chest in the belly, sensation, relaxation and stillness. Am I saying not the same thing, holding on to the state of calmness? But it doesn't mean that holding on to the state of the calmness is meditation. Normally, you know, I'm to very, I find relaxation. Yes, that's a good preparation. Move the mind on the right leg. Be there. Feel the sensation, relaxation and stillness. <clears throat> Left leg, feel the sensation, relaxation and stillness. The entire body. Entire body, sensation, relaxation and stillness outside. And a sense of calmness and quietness insight. I give a simple example, my friends. You are driving on a highway, windows closed, noise may be outside. Not at all carried away by those, tra by the traffic or the noise. Do you understand that? That is the dispassion. You don't fight. Oh, I have to renounce all these things to reach to that state. No. Then you engage in fighting. The mind creates a lot of problems. And then we say, I have been doing the practice for 50 years without any success. Everything the master teaches is wrong. Why it is wrong? Because of my wrong notion. Because of my wrong understanding. Now in that state of holding on to the state of calmness, Inside, uh, look at the breath. Look at the breath. And then I made it very simple. Three-pointed awareness of the breath. Three-pointed awareness, the first point. I know you remember the breath is going in and out. <coughs> As if you are driving. You feel the sensation. And there is no change in the rate and the rhythm of the breath. When you're driving, you're holding the steering. <coughs> what that means? Here. You're holding on to calmness in the mind. One aspect, we will go deeper in the following session.
the mind is holding on to the experience or it is aware of the calmness. So is calmness is the result of meditation? No. It is a byproduct. See that. We have another wrong notion. But yes, deeper state of calmness and a quietness helps us to. So you're just looking at the breath, feeling the breath, no change in the rate and the rhythm of the breath. And where you are aware of the three points, what is that field? It is the field of calmness. Why? That confirms the mind is in the fourth state. Why? Only that state will help us succeed. When it is holding on to it, oh, thoughts are coming, feeling rise and fall, tingling, freezing, numbness, sinking. And what happens? Mind is holding on to it. It brings a deeper experience of emptiness, void. Sky. You know, the intellect or the mind, if I say so, doesn't rest. Why not the intellect? Continue with understanding, with clarity. So when the breath goes in and comes out, ask the mind to see the space or emptiness or darkness. You know, all are same at this moment. The master says, Sukha. Sukha means good space and Sukha literally means happiness. Dukkha in Buddhism and in yoga we use Dukkha, bad space. Bad space means suffering. You know, so these words are not used for the sake of Naming it, they have a deft meaning. So why I said so, when the breath goes in, the mind drops into the space inside. The breath comes out, the mind drops into the space. Another phrase would be when the breath is going on its own inside, the breath and the mind merges into the space. 
The breath returns the mind merges into that space. What prevents any kind of distraction? The mind doesn't move into the first three states because the mind is holding on to it. You don't jump out of the car, you remain in the car and the car is running. See that. You will even find me disrupting you. And do you feel that? That is my success and yours too. Regular practice with wisdom, what Patanjali says, Abhyasa means to holding on to that state of calmness in today's practice. We'll understand what to hold on later. Breath is going in and out. What I have to do? Nothing. You feel the sensation, what I have to do? Nothing. And then I give a caveat. Do I change the rate and the rhythm of the breath? So it raises, it keeps our awareness and attention intact. And then I say, when the breath goes in, the mind and the breath merges into the space and the breath returns to mind and the breath merges into the space. <clears throat> My friends, to recognize the habit of the mind to hold on to any object outside. How do you recognize your mind will get distracted? And if it happens, start counting the breath, maybe from 1 to 25. And after 25, return to the same step. You see that? How to recognize mind is distracting, obviously. It does not want to hold on to the state of the calmness. It wants, it wants some object. The moment it wants some object, it is the objective state of the mind. See how simple it is to understand. If it is seeking some object, so no worries, you start counting. From 1 to 25, then return to
the key factor in today's meditation is awareness and attention of the mind holding on to the state of calmness or you simply maintaining awareness that the mind is looking within, that will also work. At the same time, you are looking at the breath going in and out, feeling the sensation, no change. And every time the breath goes in, the breath and the mind merge into the space inside and outside. Is this four point awareness of the breath helping the mind to hold on to the state of calmness? It is done. This breath awareness prevents the first three states to return. It also prevents disturbing on that state of which mind is aware behind the breath awareness. It may appear challenging, but <clears throat> I'm giving you the clarity. Applied Wisdom or Applied Viveka is known as Dispassion or Renunciation. Patanjali says regular practice means holding on to, holding the mind on to the state of calm. Here for two days practice. At the same time, you are aware of the breath moving in and out, feeling the sensation, no change, and sukha, mind, the breath merges into the space. My mind reflects very in a different ways.
Yesterday I heard the bell rang and I opened the door but remained inside. Remained inside, holding on to that state and talk to the stranger. It happened for a while. Mm -hmm. That event has passed. So the event of awareness of the breath holding on to will pass. What will happen then? Breath is moving on its own. <clears throat> That mind will be totally absorbed with a heightened state of awareness inside. You'll get a glimpse of objectless state. What is this meditation? How simple. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om 
Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Bring your awareness on the right hand. Your awareness on the left hand. Lift your both the palms, place it on your eyes, open the eyes inside. Know your experiences, bring the hands down. We'll share our experiences today. So Terry, you have to unmute your mic. I muted it for the... Yes, Priscilla, how are you? Uh, that was good. I felt very light. Very light. And, um, you know, like, like I was floating. That's a good experience. You see, we did yeah. nothing. But the was understanding pleasant. was clear. When there yes. is a clear understanding, <laughs> practice happens. How are you, Paul? Well, th you know, last week using the numbers were helpful, but actually this time I felt that using the numbers to, while I was breathing, the counting, actually made it, it, it was distracting. Oh. It was strange. But I got into a sense of great calmness. Ah, great calmness. Very good. Yes, yes. That... That tells what these three objective states, the subjective states of the mind were doing during the practice. You know, and there is a Shaivism, the Tantra part, where one of the ways means one of the practice is known as Anupaya. Anupaya literally means no means, natural state. So sometimes the mind gets distracted, at other time it... How are you, Terry? Calmness. I touched it. Ah, yeah. You touched it. Very good. Good. Yeah, continue to do it. No worries. How are you, Shobha? I'm fine, sir. Namaskar, sir. Namaskar. It's a better good night feel. Uh, good night. And the state of mind is very good. Right. And slightly still, stable, and doesn't look like it's a state of mind uh, which is still. Still. Very good. How are you, sir? Ashokji. Namaskar. Namaskar. Uh, there was an internet issue with and the voice was in the... Yeah. Yeah, but... No issue. Internet connection sometimes squeezes meditation also. So it's okay. How are you, Sangeeta? Sir, I was thinking a little bit about it, and I was very quiet. Yes, I was very quiet. Very good. And how about you, Pushkar? But, sir, the body becomes so tight. That's good. That's good. That's very good. You see, just contemplate and reflect. My master used to say that the surface mind means objective states of the mind. 
and it communicates with the subjective states the first three states problem is there the moment it communicates with the fourth state you know you see that sometimes people get upset on one event and the same event is repeated they are not upset it because the mind changes its states alternating between the five states and what is the journey of meditation holding on to the fourth state according to patanjali <clears throat> you listen to anyone <clears throat> he says that you are crazy but you are holding on to that state of calmness then what will happen that is all thank you very much we'll meet